Serial Cleaner is a brand new indie game on the Switch this week that's already available on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC, and as its name suggests, you play as a cleaner of serial killer murders. It's a completely bizarre concept, but hey, Mario is about a plumber that eats mushrooms and saves a princess. So let's just see how fun this bizarre concept really is. Serial Cleaner doesn't have the most engaging or in-depth narrative, nonetheless, there is a story to be told here. You play as Bob, a freelance cleaner who mainly cleans up after crime scenes of serial killers. That means that Bob has to infiltrate crime scenes, clean up blood, pick up any leftover evidence, and most importantly, get rid of bodies. Bob has to do all of this while not being caught by the police and escaping the crime scene. A lot of the story is told by a text dialogue that plays when Bob gets phone calls from different criminals looking for cleaning jobs. You'll get to learn more about Bob's sense of humor and personality through the way he responds to conversations. A bit more of his character is fleshed out when he interacts with his mother, who is very much the ideal example of a mama's boy living at home with their mom. Ultimately though, Bob is pretty much a flat character both literally and in his personality. He's pretty much the average mid-twenties man living with his mom that cracks sarcastic jokes and loves to make references. A more linear connected story is told by interacting with objects like the TV and radio that speak of murder scenes either happening right now or that just happened previously. This all foreshadows future cleaning contracts that you'll get called for. Some of these contracts or levels are contained while others are connected slightly. It's an okay story that gives a bit of background information to the levels you're playing, but ultimately it's nothing to write home about. Serial Cleaner's gameplay falls into the genre of action stealth with a bit of puzzle elements. 20% of the game will have you walk around your home where you live with your mother. These scenes have you play on small dialogues with either your mom or people calling you for job contracts. It's sort of like a hub world area, though it's pretty small. You'll pretty much spend time here at the end of every contract completion until you go to the next job. The rest of the main campaign will have you fulfill 20 contracts that in total can take you about 3.5 to 4 hours to finish. These contracts have you visit different crime scenes and pretty much clean up all the evidence without getting caught. It's simple in concept but quickly evolves with larger stages and in return more complex mechanics and layouts for you to solve and maneuver. Early contracts will have you enter a crime scene with the task of getting rid of the dead bodies and cleaning up the blood to a certain degree. It's pretty easy as these early sections are just trying to teach you to pay attention to the AI pattern of characters, learn to be patient, and know when to maneuver around the crime scene. As Bob, you can use your cleaner vision to zoom out the entire map and see where everything is. It's a really handy tool that color coordinates different parts of the objective. Bodies to pick up and evidence to collect, for example. Now, although it's a vital tool to use, it, it doesn't freeze time, so it's important to know when to use it and if there's any cops around when you use it. Now, I'd say the main challenge of these contracts is the AI pattern and new elements that are added onto the contracts as you progress through the game. Like I said, it's relatively simple at the start, but it does get increasingly more complex and challenging throughout the game. To pick up blood, for example, you use a vacuum cleaner that creates noise. The noise is demonstrated with a diamond pattern that can alert nearby cops. Other elements, like simply moving around or carrying a body, can also make noise and it's another thing to keep track of. Cops will move around the facility with cone vision and if you appear in their sights, they'll run after you. And they're pretty quick too, so your chances of escaping are rather slim. That's actually where one of my problems with the contracts come in, the hiding spots. If you're being chased by the police and find a spot that's indicated as a hiding spot, you can completely ditch the cops here. The cops can literally see you jump into a bin that's indicated as a hiding spot and they'll have no idea where you went. Now don't get me wrong, I've certainly used this mechanic to save my butt a few times, but I can't help but feel it's a bit cheap at times. I feel like it's a useful tool to have if you're not seen jumping into the hiding spot by the police, but if a cop sees you jump into a closet, it's pretty dumb to see the cop completely lose track of me. There are some remedies to this later on in the game where more puzzle elements are added in. The number of cops and the objectives in the level increases over time, making it a bit harder to avoid the police and also spacing out some of the hiding spots. Interactable elements are also introduced like distractions that can create noise to get cops to leave their post. That's another thing too, there are cops later on in the game that won't leave their position unless there's some sort of distraction in the way. Midway through the game you'll be able to start moving objects like crates, cop cars, and even giant boats in a harbor. Moving around these objects already adds a bit more complexity to the level by changing out the layout of the map, but also in return, the AI pattern of characters changes with the new layout. In these moments, the AI design really does shine outside of the times where they just completely derp on you if you find a hiding spot and they see you jump into a hiding spot. 
Now these new contract elements that add a bit more complexity are added about every 3 contracts or so, while the crime scene locations only get bigger with every level. These new elements keep contracts feeling fresh and challenging, though I never thought the difficulty of the contracts were ever frustrating or excruciating. If anything, I wish there were a bit more contracts in the main campaign for the $15 price tag. Luckily, we do get some extra contracts unrelated to the main campaign. These come in the form of 10 bonus unlockable contracts that you can earn by collecting special items in the main campaign. These bonus contracts are unrelated to the main campaign and instead take on film aesthetics from different pop culture hits. Outside of the bonus contracts, you can unlock new clothes for Bob to wear, also from other pop culture hits. The last bit of content and replay value comes in the form of challenges that you can activate for the story contracts. Here you can turn on different modifiers that make the story contracts a bit tougher, like turning off your cleaner vision and having a timer. So although the main story is a bit short at 3-4 to four hours, you still have some bonus levels, costumes, and challenges that you can tackle afterward. <laughs> Serial Cleaner's visuals are charming, but nothing really amazing or outstanding. The graphics overall are pretty flat, but I think it plays nicely whether you're playing on a large TV on a PS4, Xbox One, or Switch, or on the go on the Switch's smaller display. Main objectives easily stand out thanks to the art style, and I never had trouble losing something that I was trying to keep focus on. If anything, the art design I liked the most was the menu system of the game and the introduction that paints Bob as his badass, but when you jump into the gameplay, he's a pretty casual dude. With this game being text dialogue based, you don't get much of an actor's performance in terms of audible performance. Instead, the game shines in audio with its use of catchy jazz music. The entire game has a 70s aesthetic to it that's really in thanks to the car that Bob drives around town, but more importantly, the music. The heavy jazz music is great to vibe with, along with the trial and error gameplay this game offers with its contracts. I don't think the songs will ever get stuck in your head outside of the game, but they're pretty good and funky. If you are playing this on the Nintendo Switch, there is a little bit of use of HD rumble. Every time you're captured by a comp, you get a slight vibration. It's nothing outstanding, but it's a nice touch that I appreciate. Serial Cleaner is a fun and charming little stealth indie game available on the Xbox One, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and PC. For the $15 price tag, I wish there was a bit more story contracts here, however there still is some extra replay value in its challenges, unlockable contracts, and costumes. While I never found the game's difficulty to be frustrating, it did provide a gradual pace of challenge with competent AI, new puzzle elements, and slowly growing maps throughout the game. It's a rather short game in terms of its main story, though I think it's a worthy purchase with the extra added content. That does it for my review of Serial Cleaner for the Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. If you do have any questions I may have missed in this review, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below. Now I mentioned on Twitter earlier this week that I'm approaching college finals, so expect less reviews because I'm pretty busy with school, but also there aren't a ton of AAA releases outside of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on the Switch as well as PUBG on the Xbox One. So for the next couple of weeks, expect less frequent reviews like I have been doing for the past month, more spaced out indie game reviews, as well as possibly some rant slash discussion videos. A lot of you guys wanted me to do opinion pieces slash vlogs where I talk about things like the microtransactions in Battlefront 2, so I'm probably going to dabble with that in the future as well. But that does it for this video, so thank you all very much for watching, hope you guys have a great day, and if you're also dealing with finals, good luck. I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.